So the first thing we're gonna do is if our lovely person can unlock the brakes, then we're going to ask them to unlock the brakes and we're gonna show them this is how you do it. You bring this leg back, it's kind of spring loaded. So it does take a little bit of force initially. Otherwise, if they can't do it themselves, you can bring the hand down to the lever and have them pull back. And you can see as he gets taller, he's gonna be a little bit further away from this lever. So it is harder to move the taller the child is. And so we're gonna make sure both of those are unlocked and all of our little foot brakes on the back wheels are unlocked. The first thing that we're gonna do is, a lot of kids really cannot reach out this wide to the rim, but we are gonna prompt them to use the rims on the mobile stander because and it'll, it will be easier for them to mobilize using the rim and it's not quite as dirty. Most kids though, I will tell you, will start to use the tire because it's just easier um, and they can grip it better. And sometimes they'll even get their whole hand on the whole tire and rim combo and push wherever they can. If, uh, they're, if the family's able to provide it or you are at your clinic or your school, sometimes you can get some nice wheelchair gloves for, for this activity and then the kids don't get their hands all cruddy. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show the child how to slide their hands back, get a nice bend in the elbow, see how far back the elbow is from the shoulder, and we're gonna show them how to push fully forward. Okay, so we're gonna do that one more time. So we're gonna show them how to push forward. Now, what we wanna make sure if we're in a mobile stander, it's already gonna be set up for us. If we're in a wheelchair, we kind of want the axis to be a little, the axis of the wheel to be a little bit in front of the trunk because that allows the child to reach back further and get a really good push. Most kids, when they first learn, or our kids with CP that don't have this kind of shoulder mobility, are gonna push little pushes like this. And that's still awesome. We just want them to realize that there needs to be a forward motion of the shoulder. If you can only get them to use one hand at a time, because they have one hand that has more spasticity or less mobility, then you can show them that they can push with one hand and then you can push with the other hand so that they're still going in a straight line. One of the most important things to note when you are teaching somebody some wheeled mobility is that just getting them to do anything to get a cause and effect association with the wheels is awesome. So we're not really looking for them to go in a straight path. We're not necessarily looking for them um, to go in the direction we ask them to. We just want them to start pushing and doing something. Sometimes our kids are just gonna go in a circle because they're gonna start turning one wheel one way and the other wheel will go the other way. And they'll just start going in a circle. That's awesome. There's time for them to learn how to go straight in one path. But for the, for the first time that we're teaching somebody how to move, we just need to develop the association with when I do something, the wheels move. So that's our first step. Um, really, again, when you're transferring somebody out, you're gonna wanna lock those brakes, and then you're gonna do everything in reverse. You're gonna go bottom to top. Sometimes if you have a child that's really weak and can't stand up on their own, you might wanna leave the bum pad on longer. Sometimes I find that a padded gait belt is a helpful tool in, do, in doing this activity in the transfer because you can safely have something to hold on to when you transfer them in and out. And the gait belt will not interfere at all with the mobile stander and their mobility in the mobile stander. So have fun, learn how to wheel. Come on, shake, rattle and roll. You gotta shake.